On June 9, 2019, a steel giant weighing over half a million pounds snapped in half over the Dallas skyline. It wasn't pushed over. It was torn apart from the inside out during a summer thunderstorm. The collapse was instantly blamed on severe winds, an unavoidable act of nature. But the evidence tells a different story. The real reason for this failure wasn't the storm itself, but a single critical state the machine was left in. An error that would cost a young woman her life, cause catastrophic damage to a $50 million building, and trigger over half a billion dollars in damages and legal battles. This is Hard Hat Industries, where heavy machinery shapes the world. To understand how this crane broke, you first have to understand how it was designed to survive. This wasn't a flashy, record-breaking machine. It was a workhorse, the backbone of urban construction sites around the world. The crane is a hammerhead tower crane with a maximum lifting capacity of around 16 metric tons, or about 35,000 pounds. In its Dallas configuration, it stood at a height of approximately 300 feet with a jib, the main horizontal arm, stretching out over 200 feet. The entire upper structure sits on a turntable, or slewing ring, allowing it to rotate 360 degrees to deliver materials across a job site with precision. Its operating weight is in the region of 250 metric tons, or 550,000 pounds. This machine was the right tool for its job, erecting a luxury apartment complex called Allen City Lights in the middle of a Dallas construction boom. Its power comes not from a massive diesel engine, but from electric motors that give the operator pinpoint control over multi-ton loads. For a cost of roughly $1.5 million, a crane like this is a fundamental asset for any major construction project. It's designed for one primary purpose to fight gravity. But its most important safety feature isn't about lifting at all. It's about surviving the one force it can't fight, the wind. As our cities grow taller and our machines more powerful, have we become too confident in the steel, forgetting the simple, uncontrollable power of the air around it? This is the core of the Dallas Crane collapse. It wasn't a mystery of complex engineering or a hidden defect. It was a failure to follow the most basic storm procedure for a tower crane with the most devastating consequences. The day was Sunday, June 9th. The construction site was quiet, but the sky over Dallas was not. A severe thunderstorm was bearing down on the city, with the National Weather Service issuing warnings of destructive winds. On any tower crane, in preparation for such an event, there is one critical procedure the crane must be put into free slew or weather vane mode. The operator releases the slew brake, allowing the crane's upper structure to rotate freely. Like a weather vane on a barn, the jib is pushed by the wind so that it presents the narrowest possible profile, minimizing the force of the gust. It's a simple, elegant, and non-negotiable rule of physics. That procedure was not followed. Investigators and expert witnesses in the subsequent lawsuits concluded the slew brake on the Piner SK-415 was engaged. The crane was locked in position, unable to turn. As the storm hit, it brought with it not just rain, but a wall of wind, a downburst with speeds recorded between 70 and 80 miles per hour. This was well beyond the crane's in-service operational limit of about 45 miles per hour. With its jib locked and pointing directly into the wind, the crane was no longer a tool. It was a sail. A 200-foot-long steel lever catching the full, raw power of the storm. The wind exerted a lateral force of hundreds of thousands of pounds on the structure. But because it couldn't turn, that immense force didn't just push the crane, it twisted it. All that energy was transferred down the steel lattice of the tower mass to one single point the connection at the turntable. The crane wasn't designed to withstand that kind of torque. The steel bolts, each several inches thick, were subjected to a shearing force they were never meant to endure. The tower itself began to buckle under the strain. This wasn't a tipping event like the mecha crane. 
This was a catastrophic structural failure. The mast didn't bend. It snapped. The entire upper assembly, the cab, the jib, and the massive concrete counterweights tore free from the tower and plunged downwards, crashing directly into the adjacent Ellen City Lights apartment building and its parking garage. It sliced through five floors of the residential building as if they were made of paper. Why was the brake left on? Was it an operator oversight? A mechanical malfunction that prevented the brake from releasing? That question would become the central, billion-dollar focus of the legal war that followed. First, let's be clear. The true cost of this disaster was the death of 29-year-old Kirsten Smith, who was inside her apartment when the crane struck. That is a cost that can never be quantified, a tragedy that sits at the center of this entire event. But the financial fallout provides a staggering measure of the failure. The $860 million figure comes from the wrongful death lawsuit filed by the family of Kirsten Smith against Graystar, the building's developer, for negligence, including failing to ensure the crane was in free-slew mode and lapsed inspections. In 2023, a Dallas jury awarded $860 million, covering $500 million to Smith's estate for loss of companionship and mental anguish, $350 million to her mother, $20 million to her father, and $500,000 in punitive damages against Graystar. The jury cleared Big Crane and Rigging, the crane operator, of liability. However, Texas law capped punitive damages, reducing the award to $404 million, which the family accepted to avoid a new trial. Graystar's appeal is ongoing as of 2025, with $75 million in bonds posted to pause collection but no final payout has been made. This $860 million verdict was just one piece of the financial toll. Separate lawsuits from 11 other injured residents addressing medical costs, pain, and suffering were settled confidentially in August 2024 against both Graystar and Big, likely totaling millions. The crane itself, valued at $1.5 million, was a complete write-off its wreckage unsalvageable, a minor loss in comparison. The direct property damage was catastrophic. The Ellen City Lights, a 460-unit luxury apartment building valued at over $50 million, suffered such severe structural damage that it required partial demolition and full refurbishment. Insurance payouts covered at least $59.7 million by 2021 for repairs, resident relocation, and lost rental income, with total property-related costs estimated to exceed $100 million, including demolition and business interruption for Graystar, who lost millions in annual revenue. Nearby businesses and properties, like the Gabriella Apartments, also faced damages, further inflating the economic impact. When you add the lost crane, the devastated building, the displaced community, the personal injury settlements, and the colossal wrongful death verdict, the total financial consequence likely exceeds $600 million, a staggering declaration of the cost of a single, locked break. But when a price tag this high is placed on a tragedy, does it truly deliver justice, or does it simply quantify the scale of the failure? In the wake of the collapse, the Occupational Safety and Health Administration, or OSHA, launched a federal investigation. While the final report was complex, its core findings and the arguments made in court pointed overwhelmingly to one conclusion. The crane was not configured to weather vane in the face of the storm. The crane's operator, who was not on site at the time, insisted he had left the machine in the proper free slew mode. The crane company, Big, initially argued that the storm's winds were so unforeseeable and historic that they would have overwhelmed the crane regardless. But experts countered that this exact scenario, a locked crane facing a windstorm, was a well-understood and entirely preventable cause of failure. The debate raged over whether it was human error or a mechanical fault that kept the brake engaged, but the end result was the same. The machine was not allowed to save itself. The Dallas collapse served as a brutal wake-up call, 
particularly for construction sites in regions prone to sudden, violent weather like Texas's Tornado Alley. It prompted an immediate review of storm preparation protocols across the industry. Site managers and crane operators were retrained on the non-negotiable importance of pre-storm checklists. The incident underscored a fundamental vulnerability, a multi-million dollar construction project, and the lives of those around it can be entirely dependent on the final actions of a single operator before they leave for the day. We started by saying the real reason for the collapse wasn't the storm. The storm was the weapon, but the failure to release the slew break is what loaded the gun. A tower of German steel, weighing more than one Statue of Liberty, was held rigid against an unstoppable force until it tore itself to pieces. It's a solemn reminder that in the world of heavy machinery, the most important component isn't the steel or the motors, but the procedure. The Dallas Tower Crane collapse was a brutal lesson in physics. A locked brake turned a $1.5 million crane into a massive sail, allowing 70 mile per hour winds to snap its steel mast. It was a preventable failure of procedure that resulted in one tragic death and triggered over $600 million in damages and legal battles. Thanks for watching Hard Hat Industries, your source for serious machines doing real work. If you like this, hit like, subscribe, and turn on notifications so you don't miss what's next. Until then, keep your head down and your gear running.